Hey, good afternoon. I uh, just wanted to continue with the breakout candidates for the Metro. I said I wanted to do like three or four at a time. So we're going to do Carolina, Washington, and Pittsburgh. These are three of the tougher teams in the Metro, considering they all have a pretty veteran roster with limited spaces. Uh, but we'll get right into it. Carolina. Uh, the Hurricanes, uh, they don't have a ton of young guys coming up. Uh, they do have Jack Drury. I'm going to go with Jack Drury because um, he, he got into a decent amount of games this past season. Looked fine at points, looked lost to others. Um, but I think in a more of a, uh, refined, like, third-line role, especially if Stasny doesn't come back, that type of thing, uh, I think that, I think Jewelry would look good. Um, you know, if, I, if he plays maybe, like, 60-plus games this year, I can see him putting up, like, that 15-goal mark. Um, that's gonna be a lot of these breakout candidates, because a lot of these teams don't have the roster spots to be putting in, like, kids for all 82 games, so... Um, I feel like a lot of the times if I'm going to make these types of projections, it's going to be like that 15, 20 goals, like maybe 15, 20 assists, 20, 25 assists, that type of thing. Now, when I start getting to teams that have more of an open spot, then I'll give projections to go a little bit higher. Uh, but right now, with Carolina, that's what I think for Jewelry. So, um, you know, he's still a solid, a little solid younger player. I don't know if he's still a prospect. I don't really consider him still a prospect, but... Uh, I think he'll put up that 15 goal mark this year, assuming he plays 65 or more games. Uh, that's fair. Um, Washington was a little bit difficult because I wanted to do Rasmus Sandin, but um, given everybody's reactions on Rasmus Sandin's small stint in Washington, people always already think he broke out with them in Toronto. Um, so I didn't go with Sandin. I went with Connor McMichael because I think he has a real shot of playing uh, the entire year with, Col or with Washington. Uh, McMichael kind of feels like it's his last chance 22 years old already he's played in the AHL has not put up crazy good AHL numbers either uh, so this is really feels like like Michael's last chance and you know what I'm gonna say if he plays the entire year and if he makes the team out of camp I'll say he hits 18 goals this year I'll say that depends on who he's playing with who's healthy and whatnot but uh, McMichael has the talent I just don't know if it's gonna work in Washington given um, how veteran that lineup is. Now, I wanted to say Lapierre, but, you know, Lapierre, I don't even know if he's going to make the team. He's a little bit younger than McMichael, so he's got another year or so. So I don't know if he necessarily makes the team this year. I think he might be, like, a call-up. Uh, but Lapierre's coming up on that time, too, where it's like, all right, it's now and ever type of thing. But I think McMichael, I think Lapierre has another more, another year than McMichael does. Uh, Pittsburgh. Um, Pittsburgh, really, they only have a couple of young guys. I don't think... Um, I don't think they necessarily have any rookies that step up this year. Um, you know, they have Poland, they have Nylander, and they have Ty Smith. Ty Smith has already had some decent seasons in the NHL. Nylander and Poland, I don't think either of them really get a bulk of games because Pittsburgh's veteran lineup, they have a, a veteran forward group. They're the oldest forward group in the league. They don't really have a spot for any of these guys. The guys they lost, they, they replaced so I don't know if Nylander or Poland will necessarily get a chance. So I think by default it has to be Ty Smith. Now Ty Smith, he has skill. Uh, he he can play good. I mean, you know, with the Devils he had some stints of looking real good. I think that trade with the Devils where they sent Marino over there, I think that gets overlooked a little bit. You know, I, I you know Marino looked good, but uh, this could work out for for Pittsburgh too. I think if they play Ty Smith all year, um, I wouldn't even shelter his minutes. I would just play him let him earn his spot, that type of thing. And I think you could be pleasantly surprised with the fact that this kid might put up 40 points. He's going to be playing with an offense that's going to score a lot of goals with Malkin and Crosby, Zucker, or not Zucker, uh, Raquel, Gensel, uh, now Riley Smith. They got rid of Zucker and they replaced him with Riley Smith. So they're going to score some goals with this lineup. Um, so let him maybe take some of that responsibility from Latang. let Latang get some easier minutes preserve him for what you hope will be a playoff run and go from there so that's my breakout candidates for those three teams we'll do another three teams tomorrow um but yeah if you're a fan of carolina washington or pittsburgh let me know who you would pick for their breakout candidates because it's weird um if these guys may never even play this year who knows but there's just such veteran lineups pretty set lineups that it's hard to pick someone who's going to break out and carolina with cock and yemi i feel like you already broke out this year so uh, like Kakademi, when Kakademi puts up 55, 60 points this year, people are going to say that's his breakout. But 
he played pretty well this year, and I think that was his breakout this year. Um, so we'll see. But yeah, if you're a fan of Carolina, Washington, or Pittsburgh, let me know what you think in the comments section. You guys can like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll go from there. You guys have a good day.